Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to my channel, Runaway Slave 2.0. I would like to thank all of my subs and supporters who watch, share, like, and comment on the videos. In addition, I have to give a big up to all of my people who purchased my masterpiece, The N-Word is No Secret in the Service. If you would like to purchase this masterpiece, just go to the link in the pinned comment. Thanks again, everybody. Big up to you all. Let's cook. Okay. So this video here is about this guy named Kid Rock. And the reason why this video is about this guy, Kid Rock, is because the life and career of Kid Rock is the perfect example of a white supremacist culture vulture. This is the perfect example, you know, of a white dude coming around black people in the hood, using hip hop, playing a role, but the whole time he always hated black folks, always had a disdain and hate for black people. And he's also the perfect example because of the range that he showed people. He never changed as a person. Kid Rock always was who he was. I mean, as soon as he came out of his parents' womb, you know. But the range he went from being around black people as a DJ, rapping, the dress code, the hip-hop, acting black, to then waving the Confederate flag and saying nigger in concerts and stuff like that. That's what kind of range. I don't think we ever seen this kind of range before. Maybe we have. Get in the comments. Uh, I may be forgetting about somebody or may not even know about a person with this kind of a drastic range and showing you, okay? So get in the comments. Let me know if there's somebody else with that kind of range. But I never liked Kid Rock, never was impressed by him, you know, never thought he was talented, always thought he was a disgusting sleazeball. Never was I impressed with Kid Rock, you know what I mean? At all. I didn't think he was a talented dude. But let's get into it. This guy, Kid Rock, his name is Robert James Ritchie. And contrary to what he tries to bamboozle people into believing, Kid Rock is not from Detroit. He's not some cool white kid in the hood or a white kid who lived in a trailer, a trailer park. Kid Rock was born rich. His parents are rich. His mother and father owned several car dealerships. He was raised in a mansion in Romeo, Michigan. As you can see here, the racial demographic of Romeo, Michigan in 2023. So imagine what it was in the late 70s and 80s when Kid Rock is coming, was coming up. Um, look at his rest right here. This is, this, this is his rest. This is his crib that he was raised in, okay? Kid Rock, that's where he's from. So as a child, he would help his family uh, care for the horses, go swimming. He would pick apples with the family. You know, a uh, Opie White life. You know, so the whole white boy, dirty, dirty Detroit white boy stuff is a scam. He's not from any trailer parks. He's not cool. OK, this is where Kid Rock is from. So in the 80s, Kid Rock, he became interested in hip hop. He's watching TV. He sees Run DMC, the Beastie Boys. And like a typical white American kid, you know, hip hop was attractive. So what Kid Rock did was he studied rap. He lived it. He slept it. You know, he had all the time in the world. He had all the money in the world, and this is what he did. So he got into it. He started DJing. And, and again, people, his parents are rich. They can buy him any equipment that he needs. The latest turntable, the latest DJ equipment that's out, digital stuff, whatever is new, he had it. He can get it. He had it all because his parents were rich, okay? So when Kid Rock is going about doing this, he got, you know, pretty decent at DJing and rapping, okay? And eventually what happened is he befriended a dude named James the Black Man Harris. Some people call him DJ Black Man, but his name is James the Black Man Harris in Detroit, okay? This dude, James the Black Man Harris, had a group called the Beast Crew, okay? Now, James the Black Man Harris is the one who bought Kid Rock to the hood in Detroit, bought him around the brothers, bought him around the Beast Crew. And Kid Rock, his father at the time, questioned what he was doing. OK, like, what are you doing? His father even started to call him a wigger. Y'all know what a wigger is. OK, so Kid Rock is coming to Detroit. He's hanging with, you know, James, the black man, you know, and. uh, He came in, he showed the people that he was kind of good on the turntables. He's doing parties and, you know, talent shows and events. And people are like, OK, he's all right. He, he, he's all right. You know what I mean? So. The Beast Crew, right, they continued to bring him around in Detroit. So the Beast Crew, they taught him everything that he could know about hip-hop. 
Remember, this dude, Kid Rock, is sucking it up like a sponge. He's a student of the game because it's not natural to him. So he has to be a student of the game. It's not natural. It's not in his DNA. So he has to be a student of the game. He has to study extra hard, you know. So he's embracing it. He's embracing the crew. He's hanging with them. They're teaching him everything, you know. He's even partying with them. Members of this Beast crew even said that Kid Rock has slept with all the black women that were around. Uh, Kid Rock even impregnated a black woman. He has a biracial son. And to this day, Kid Rock says his son is half white. <laughs> That's how we say he's half white. So the brothers in Detroit is uh, DJ the black man and the Beast crew. His name is the black man. That's what he, black man. That's what he calls himself. Um, they taught Kid Rock everything about the culture, the history, the music. They taught him how to rap properly. Uh, and, of course, they're protecting this kid, this guy, Kid Rock. We know that a white boy who's not from the hood, he's hang, hanging around um, black people in the hood. He's going to need protection. So, you know, Kid Rock, he's food for, you know, this dude is food in the hood. You know what I mean? He's a little white boy in the hood. He's food. So, of course, you know this Beast crew was giving him protection, you know, keeping the wolves off of him. So Kid Rock, he's embracing it. He's pushing. He's rapping. He's getting attention. His career starts to take off. When his career starts to take off, what happened then was he abandoned the black man and the beast crew. He abandoned him. He abandoned DJ Black Man and the Beast crew. Showed him who he was who he was. In addition, people, the reason why Kid Rock was getting looked is because Vanilla Ice is a wave right now. Remember Vanilla Ice, the white boy rapper? So a lot of these labels are looking for the next coming of the next big rapper, the next Vanilla Ice, so that they can, you know, cake off and make all kinds of money. So they figured maybe it's this dude, Kid Rock. So he was, they were trying to give him a look. As you, if you can remember, if you look back, he's trying to look like Vanilla Ice. You know what I mean? They figured he may be the next back thing. So the crew in Detroit noticed that Kid Rock is distancing himself. Now, Black man and the rest of the crew, the Beast crew in Detroit, they were under the impression that they would bring Kid Rock in, they would all make music together, you know, then black man would eventually bring in his people and they would all just eat together. No. Kid Rock said no. Thank you, but no thanks. Bye, niggas. Kid Rock is out. He's getting the attention of these big labels. He distanced himself from the crew and he even took it even further. Kid Rock took it further. He also blocked another member from the Beast crew who actually showed him how to rap from getting a deal. There's a, a member of the Beast crew uh, by the name of Champ Town. Champ Town is the one who taught Kid Rock how to rap. Kid Rock is getting a deal in New York, okay? He's up in New York. He's, he's, he's looking at something. He's about to get a deal. They asked about Champ Town, and Kid Rock just kicked Champ Town's whole back end to these people, to the label. I think it was Jive RCA. Yeah, Jive RCA. Kid Rock, when they asked about Champ Town, Kid Rock is kicking his back in. No, I don't sign him, sign me, you know, doing that snake stuff. Okay, what you expect, right? So Kid Rock, he finally signs the Jive RCA records. But the Beast crew in Detroit, they taught him everything, absolutely nothing, okay? So Kid Rock goes on, he puts out his first album. He puts out his first album, he goes on tour with Too Short, Ice Cube. He's doing big things. So after he put out his first album, his album didn't live up to that Vanilla Ice potential that they were hoping for. They thought that this dude could possibly do something. Oh, he sucks. The label dropped him. Label dropped him. Kid Rock didn't get discouraged. He continues to make music. But now he says he's going to do things a little differently. Now he's putting music out. His music is now hip-hop with a little twist of rock and roll. That's what he did. he's doing now. He's doing his hip-hop with a little twist of rock and roll. So he's making his hip hop slash rock music. And in this music, Kid Rock is saying the N word and everything. Time goes on. Kid Rock is still doing his thing. And he kind of adapts to this new white trailer trash type persona. You know, I guess he's trying to look like those trailer trash people in Detroit, Michigan, that area. You know, that whole thing. He picks up on that. He comes with that persona and the white community is loving it. The fans are loving it. So he's no longer this cool hip-hop white boy from the streets of Detroit. He's now this trailer trash white boy doing music, you know, always drinking and smoking, that whole thing. So Kid Rocky eventually signs another deal. He has the support of the white community. White people are loving him. 
he's doing this rock thing. And he's now he's doing more of the rock thing, okay? Now, after he does the rock thing, he's doing the rock thing, and then he goes in, he dives in, and he adds more country music to it. Okay? With a little twist of hip hop. Got the country in it, got the rock in it. He's still passionate about saying the N word. He's yelling it, he's screaming it. Okay? When he was questioned on using the N word, Kid Rock said that him and his friends always use the N word. He was asked this question on the Howard Stern show, I believe. He said, We always use the N word. So Kid Rock took it a little, little further. He wanted to solidify this racist persona that he had. He wanted to dig deeper. He wanted to represent, you know, who he could be for his people as a white supremacist even more. And what he did was he started hanging out and collabing with one of the most overt racist country singers of all time, this guy named David Allen Coe. Okay, so Kid Rock is hanging with this dude, David Allen Coe. Nobody cares. Nobody said anything as far as, hey, what you doing? Because the white community is loving Kid Rock. Okay, he's on his new wave. Actually, the black community is loving him, too. I mean, them shine bones, not us. We ain't give a F about no Kid Rock. Is anybody anywhere? Let me keep going. No Kid Rock. So Kid Rock's album is major. He puts out a new album. He sold like 14 million copies. He's got this new persona now uh, that he's showing to people. He's overtly showing people that he's a racist. He's hanging out with racist country singers. He's even waving the Confederate flag at concerts. And white, the white Americans are loving him. They're embracing it. He's a big deal. He's touring. He's making appearances in movies. He's in cartoons. Everybody knows him. He's even dating white model chicks now, okay? He's dating this chick, Pamela Anderson, now. He's doing everything he wants to do. He's even publicly dissed black women, stating that Beyonce doesn't do anything for him, you know, like she's some kind of lame or whatever. And he says, you know, I prefer my women with flat butts and big boobs. This is what Kid Rock said. So he got his dream woman. He's running, running around with Pamela Anderson. He has the white community embracing him. And people, you got to remember, Kid Rock in the past was trying to fit in. He slept with all the black girls, as the Beast Crew said. He slept with all the black girls. But he's clearly saying, I don't like no black women, man. I like my white women. So there you go. I mean, there you go. And I've said it numerous times on this channel, y'all. White guys who have the opportunity, typically, they don't like black women, okay? Now, they will sleep with them, and they will do the fetish thing with them. This is no knock on our women. Don't get caught up in that. I'm just telling you, white men typically do not like black women. When they do, you know, men have the upper hand because they're men, and they can do the whole fetish thing. They can abuse them. Still hate milk to this day. When I was still in high school, I was so desperate for male validation and attention. I used to have a thing with this boy, and he used to call me the N-word, and I just let him. Not only did he call me the N-word, but he wanted me to call him my master as a term of endearment, and I did. He'll be like, what's up, my little N-word or my little slave baby? And I'd be like, hey, master. Unsurprisingly, it turned out he never liked me and I was just an inside joke between his friends. When I was in like first. There you go. The young lady said it right there. That's Kid Rock and a lot of other a lot of these other guys. It's a it's a fetish thing. It's like you know, that's what they want to do. And all the other nasty, disgusting, gross things that they have to go through when they're with them. These guys are filming them and taking stuff back. Showing the guys and saying, I mean, come on, man. But anyway, Kid Rock is doing his thing. He's flaunting the Confederate flag around. He's not even from the South, by the way, but he's flaunting the flag around. Uh, he's dropping his country music 100%. He's all out in the country. He's a real country artist now. And uh, Kid Rock actually said that this is what he always wanted to do. He said he never liked rap. And he said he used rap to get him where he needed to be. I don't believe that part. Now, I don't I don't think that he liked black people, but I think that Kid Rock did like rap. And I think because he sucked at it and he didn't get the response that Vanilla Ice got. So he's saying it now. I believe that Kid Rock did really like rap. You know what I'm saying? But it is what it is. The black people in rap didn't really embrace him. You know, he was he, he sucked. You know what I'm saying? So 
I think that he's just saying that. But I do wholeheartedly believe that Kid Rock never liked white people. I mean, he would tell you that himself. I mean, black people, I'm sorry, never liked black people. He always had a disdain for black people. So Kid Rock, he's doing his thing. He even joined up with Mitt Romney. Mitt Romney uh, made a campaign song for Mitt Romney. The conservative white people are loving it. Now, check this. Kid Rock is cursing. He's using the N-word. He's showing the disdain for black people. He's rocking the Confederate flag and rolling with hardcore white supremacist country singers. After all that, and saying that he doesn't like black women, the NAACP gave him an award in 2011. I can't make this up. 2011, the NAACP gave Kit Rock an award. And it, that may be a little shocking to some, but when you look at the history of the NAACP, it's not. The NAACP has always been operated and ran by white supremacists. They tell these puppet Negroes who they put out what to do. And it could be very confusing for a lot of our people sometimes. This is one thing that I don't like about it because it confuses a lot of our people who just don't understand. It's hard to understand, okay? Uh, they appear as though they're supporting black people, but they pick and choose wisely. If you look throughout history, right, you look throughout history, there are hundreds and hundreds of stories where black Americans have contacted the NAACP. I've even done videos on this channel where they say they didn't get a response from the NAACP. It's a reason for that. It's because the NAACP is picking and choosing which things they're going to stand behind. It have to be strategic about what they're doing, okay? They were ignored. Uh, a, a lot of people said that they were ignored. I mean, we're talking major, catastrophic, oppressive, racist events where black people felt as though we got to call the NAACP. The NAACP just ignores them. But in other cases, oh, we'll pick that up. It's for a reason. It's for a reason. So by now we should get the point. Anyway, these people gave Kid Rock an award in 2011. Uh, even after what he said about Beyonce, you know, this guy Jay-Z even performed with him. Jay-Z collabed with him. But, I mean, people, Jay-Z, come on. What has Jay-Z ever stood for? Here's a guy right here who wears the shirt with quotes from a real-life Satanist named Aleister Crawley, you know, I mean, it's Jay-Z, y'all. It's Jay-Z. What can we say? What can we expect from this dude? Look at him. Look at this goofy. I know we like to uh, remember the 1995 Jay-Z reasonable doubt. That's not him, y'all. That's not it, y'all. That's not it. I mean, it's Jay-Z. He, he promotes the quotes, and the, the quotes and wears a shirt of a Satanist. That's enough, y'all. That's enough. Aleister Crowley. But... These Negroes who are under Caucasian hypnosis or Negroes who are dealing with uh, personality worship, which is an illness, they'll say, oh, well, Jay ain't mean it like that. He meant he coming from the hood and he's working hard from the mud and he and he gets what it. Shut up. Whatever. We got no time for you, Negroes. It's Jay-Z. Anyway, so Kid Rock, he's going on tour. He's out there doing his thing. And as he's going on tour, black people are starting to protest him. They're protesting because... He's constantly flaunting the Confederate flag. But as, he, as they're protesting, nobody cares about these protesters. Big corporate America, General Motors, the people who are paying Kid Rock for these tours, the people who he's protesting, they don't care, man. They still going on with the concert, you know. They said in public statements that they're going to support Kid Rock, you know. And in these situations, in addition, Little Caesars, black people were pro uh, 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 protesting the whole Little Caesars situation. They opened up a new arena, a Little Caesars arena in Detroit. They had Kit Rock there, heading it up. Black people are promoting this. I mean, I mean, sorry, protesting this because Kit Rock is promoting the Confederate flag. Now, here's my thing. I don't have any idea what black people were looking for here. You know, they said they wanted Kit Rock to denounce the flag and stop saying the N-word. They, they said they wanted Kit Rock to publicly say that he denounces the Confederate flag. Now, this is my, a, a problem we have, many of our people. So if Kit, here's my question to people who think like this. If Kit Rock stopped waving the Confederate flag and said he denounced it, now would you say he's good to go? Is he good enough now to sit around and support and have coffee and tea with? I mean, I, I don't know what these Negroes want. I don't, I, a lot of times, I don't know what these, these protesting Negroes want. So, 
they want him to denounce the Confederate flag. My thing is, okay, so if he denounces it, now what? Now you can support him and, you know, give him a hug and pictures? Uh, what do you want? He's standing for his religion. He is a white supremacist. The companies that are paying him are American white supremacists. He keeps showing you why do these people constantly beg white people to be nice to him? You know, just don't support him. That's it. Or anything he does or anything the people who are affiliated with him do, the people who pay him, even the black people, don't support them either. Easy fix. Easy fix. I mean, I don't understand a lot of the, you know, the energy of some of our people who are going out to protest Kid Rock and a lot of these other people. You know what I'm saying? And what I believe about these people is these are the black folks who don't care about racism and religion and white supremacy. These are the people who just want, want white people to be nicer to them. That's it. It's like, OK, you are a racist. Don't show your one and just be nicer to me and, and it will be OK. No, no. I, how much sense does that make? These are the people who do not care about racism. They just want white people to be nicer to them. It makes absolutely no sense. I mean, let the dude do, I mean, whatever. Why is he hurting your feelings? He's a white supremacist. Your boss is even a white supremacist. The people who's paying him is white supremacists. The black people who collab with him and support him are a bunch of chocolate dip white supremacists. It is what it is. You know what I mean? Let it go. And when people like Kid Rock and these other racists see this, when they see people supporting them after what they did, they see these Jay-Z's and these other Sean Bone Negroes uh, uh, coming around supporting them. Um, it's hard for these white supremacists to even have a little bit of respect for them. That's the thing. That's the thing. It's, it's, it's hard for them, too, because they know what they believe. They know what they believe. But anyway, Kid Rock also throughout his career, he was very vocal about the situation with this guy, Colin Kaepernick. We know Colin Kaepernick took the knee, the football player took the knee to protest police brutality. He, pro he, he took the knee. He's against police brutality. He wanted the NFL to say something or whatever. Listen, no knock on that. But I mean, we've had many leaders from our community who spoke on this in the past. Many black people from our community who were stand up, who Spoke on this in the past. Keep, keep that straight. We did not need Colin Kaepernick for anything. First off, okay? Now, Colin Kaepernick took this stance as a celebrity. The NFL, while he's playing football uh, uh, against police brutality. Now, we know this was a big liberal show. We know that police brutality is a problem. The Colin Kaepernick situation was a big liberal show. And we know it was because... After Colin Kaepernick was doing this, he signed a mega deal with the same white supremacists who sponsored the white people that he was protesting to get the NFL. Please make it make sense. He signed a mega deal with Nike where Nike was NFL's sponsor. So, I, I mean, come on, man. I, they, they do this because they know people just don't understand. They're all in this together. Nothing to do with the cause, though. But we didn't need Colin Kaepernick to address this cause. Many of our people have addressed this cause. That was for y'all. That was for white people, okay? Now, this dude, Kid Rock, <laughs> he was vocal against what Kaepernick was doing. Insane. How could you be against that? But anyway, it's Kid Rock. So he's showing that he supports the, br the brutality of young black men and women or black people, period, in America. He's saying, I don't care. That's his point. So Kid Rock is going against that. He's still going on. Kid Rock is still doing his thing. And after that, you know, the white supremacist movers and shakers who have billions of dollars, big corp, they're really embracing and pushing this guy, Kid Rock. Uh, again, like I said, Little Caesars Arena in Detroit opened. They had Kid Rock open up for him. Yes, the black people did pro protest that. They don't care. All black people have to do. Stop buying the five dollar square pizzas. Do you think that black people can stop doing that in Detroit? If they're protesting Kid Rock, Little Caesars giving them money at the Little Caesar Arena, 
You stop buying the five dollar pizzas. Simple, right? Nope, it's not going to work like that. That's that's the logical way of doing things. Anyway, uh, Kid Rock actually also opened up a restaurant in Detroit, and at this restaurant, he was also there were suits filed against him for racial discrimination. His restaurant. I mean, Kid Rock is just you know he's still traveling, he's touring, he's making millions. He's making all kinds of racist statements. He's continuously dissing black people, dissing black culture. Uh, it's something interesting and funny about this dude, Kid Rock. Um, Kid Rock, he has a, a, a black baby mother. He has a biracial child. His bi- the, the mother of his biracial child had to pay him $25 a week in child support. <laughs> Man. Anyway, had to pay him $25 a week in child support. But, people, that's the story of Kid Rock. I mean... Here's a guy right here, a culture vulture, another one of the many, a culture vulture, all out white supremacist pig, always hated black people. He came around. He used black folks to learn the music. Okay. He did this with the Detroit Beast crew. He's learning. He's drinking. He's smoking. He's chilling. He's sleeping with black women. The brothers are protecting him from the hood wolves who might have seen Kid Rock as food. Okay. And, you know. Like some niggas who always embraced these white people, Kid Rock gave him his butt to kiss. When it was time, get out of here. I'm done. Whatever. All this time, Kid Rock hated black people and still does today. I mean, he didn't change at all. He's his dad's son. He's this same person who he was when he first came in Detroit, hanging around the Beast crew when he had a biracial child and all that. I mean, even after he was able to keep going, He's waving his Confederate flag. He's saying the N-word. He's getting collabs with Jay-Z. But, you know, people like that. I don't know what to say. I don't know what to say. I mean, it's not surprising because in hip-hop, they've always had dudes coming around, acting black, acting like they like black people, and just extracting from the culture. And these black rappers are embracing them and kissing their butt. I even seen Rakim kissing uh, Eminem's butt. I mean... Just going overboard. I, I, I've seen this from these dudes. Uh, it, it's just really disgusting. It's just, uh, it's just disgusting, y'all. And Kid Rock, I just think he's the perfect example because uh, it's one thing to embrace somebody who may be white because they are talented and they're a good person or they present themselves as a good person and they have talent. Kid Rock, he sucked, man. He sucked at hip-hop. Never a good person. And he's showing people, this is me. This is how I am. This is how I roll. But he's still able to run around and do whatever he wanted to do. No respect for weak niggas, man. No respect. It's it's, it's really, that's just how it is. He dogged the whole crew, made sure the brothers didn't get a deal. You know what I mean? But I'm going to tell you something interesting about this crew that Kid Rock uh, came around, the Beast Crew in Detroit originally. This is what I believe. This is an opinion. If one of us was there, and we said to these Beast Crew dudes, hey, listen, stop bringing this white boy around, man. This dude, Kid Rock, ain't right. He's a racist. He ain't that. Stop doing this. I think this Beast Crew would have, would have, I think they would have jumped us, yo. I think they would have tried to beat the brakes off of us for doing, I think if one of us would have went at Kid Rock when he was first coming around and said, yo, you don't belong here, man. I know who you are. You a racist, whatever. I think that this Beast Crew, who later on said, or what he did this to us, he did it. I think them dudes would have jumped this, yo. I think they would have beasted out like the Beast Crew, and I think they would have jumped out. I think they would have tried to jump us. What y'all think? Let me know. Get in the comments. But anyway, because that's how, that's how Negroes act when these white people come around. They get all emotional when you try to, you know, tell them about, you know, this, this, and that. Oh, no, nah, he good. Whatever. You know, but one thing that a lot of our people don't understand, y'all, this is one thing that a lot of people just don't get. The more and more you bring white people around and they know that they don't have to respect you and you kissing their butt and you accepting them and you praising them, the more that they lose respect for you. OK, now I'm not saying that Kid Rock had to like these black dudes or these black people, but trust me, he was paying attention and he lost more and more respect for them every day, knowing I know I'm a white cracker. Look how they treat me. Look how these white girls, look how these black girls are treating me. I hate these, I hate these people. He loses respect more and more. I ain't saying Kid Rock got to like you 
or any white person. But white supremacists respect certain black people. They don't like them. They like the they like the Sean Bone Weaklings, but they respect certain people. It's hard to respect a person or people who embrace you and let you come around and do these things while you know deep down inside you hate all, you would like to put them on a noose. Anyway, you it, it's just something that we just suffer from, y'all. It's something we suffer. You ever see how happy our people get when a white person come around and could do something just halfway just as good? From the culture, you know, a white boy average dancer, white girl average dancer, uh, uh, a white person who could sing halfway good. I mean, Negroes be going nuts. They be going absolutely nuts. I recently seen a video of some white boys doing some kind of frat fraternity step dancing. I think these white boys are like the new member of a fraternity. What, what are the ones she the, the word of purple and yellow? Is it Omega Psi Phi? They were purple and yellow. Um, I think Stephen A. Smith and Shaq is with them. I think white people are more entitled to being Greeks anyway, but whatever. It's supposed to be a black fraternity. I guess some white boys joined in, and these white boys are doing, like, the dances that they do. And you could just hear all the Negroes just going nuts. They just on the floor. Oh, oh my God. Look, just going what Black dudes, black women, really sucking the white off of these, these, these white dudes' butt, man. It was a. I'm like, that's niggas for you. That's how we act. But people, Kid Rock, to me, he's in a, a very interesting example of a white supremacist vulture. Now, the reason why is because he went from the range that he showed us. He went from being down in the trenches and the bottoms with black folks, you know, being taught in the hood in Detroit, sleeping with black women, trying to dress black, trying to look black and talk black, rapping, DJing. And then he goes from that to the most overt, hardcore, I hate niggas type white supremacist. I've never seen that kind of bamboozling before. You know what I'm saying? And I'm saying bamboozling because Kid Rock was always the same person from day one, but they usually don't show you that kind of range, yo. Have we ever seen that kind of range before? I don't know. People, get in the comments. Let me know what you think about this anyway. Easy.